News Channel 5 Network. This is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. I am Nick Barris. It is Wednesday, and uh, you know I'm going to want you all to join in the conversation. Do you like me? I mean, I seem like a decent guy. I'm not asking personally because many of you don't know me personally, but I like to think you're watching this show so you appreciate me as a host and, and our terrific guests we have on. And I hope that you watch the News Channel 5 network and follow the news and feel that for the most part I am fair and impartial. Trust me, I have some very strong opinions about a great many things, but my opinion except on occasion when it might sneak out on this program, which you know is okay to get the conversation going. But my opinion has no place in my reporting. I always try to be fair. I can tell you this unequivocally, that I do not report fake news. And if you think I do, I'm right and you're wrong. <laughs> the, the question though is, do you like me? Because in this day and age now, I feel journalists are under attack to some degree, and you've probably heard this, and the whole issue of fake news. Am I saying that journalists don't make mistakes and there are some unscrupulous ones out there? Absolutely not, there are, and they need to be held accountable. But I mean, the, the larger picture is what journalism means to our democracy and what happens when it's under attack, be it from the president or anyone else who, who chooses to say everything that they just don't like is fake. Um, why that's a problem. We're going to get into that this morning and uh, take some of your phone calls, 737-7587, with a professor of media, journalism, and the like, Larry Burris from MTSU. Good morning, Good sir. Good to be here. Good to be here. You like me. I like you. I think we, yep. you and I go way back. We I mean, go a long we're, time. We're long chums, time. and I respect you and the job you do teaching these young journalists. What do they think right now when they see some of what's happening out there? A lot of these are... are kids, you know, they're young adults, who really aren't sure they want to go into journalism. Yeah. And uh, so they're, they're kind of feeling it out. And, and there are a few in there who really want to do the, the traditional kind of reporting and investigating. So we will kind of, kind of help yeah. them along. We want to, the ones who really aren't, aren't interested, it's a good place to, to try things out in the university. You know, we kind of help oh, them yeah. do that. So they decide that we get, try to convince them fairly early, do you really want to do this? Mm -hmm. and, and the ones who don't, that's fine. You know, yeah. You've got people who are, are dedicated, who want to find the truth, and uh, the ones who just want to uh, spout off about things, we try to get them somewhere else. And, and you know, you there's know. all types of different reporting, Absolutely. as you know. Here Absolutely. at News Channel 5, one of your most, uh, you know, accomplished uh, alums, Phil Williams. Phil Williams. Phil Williams is an investigative reporter, and he does different types of reporting, say, than I do. I mean, he has an eye team, and he may work on a story for weeks, mm -hmm. and then his stories are big, and they're very thorough, and he does a terrific job. I'm more of an enterprise daily reporter where, you know, I'll come up with stories that I do on a daily basis, not quite as in-depth because I don't have the time. And then we have other reporters, too, that are there to cover the news of the day. If there's a, a, sure. a building fire or if there's a news conference sure. for some kind of an arrest made, there's all types of reporting that's made. But um, so you get into it, and there's a lot of reasons you may want to get into it or not. Do some of your students have concerns about their safety now, which is something I never had to consider when I was looking at journalism, your safety of maybe being out there and worried that people who view you as an enemy come after you? There, there's some concern now. We had a, an instance last year when one of our uh, young lady uh, reporters uh, got the press passes to, to go cover President Trump. Oh, the, when he came and visited, came and right visited here across the street. They did Municipal. security yeah. clearance. And the young reporter was walking into the press area, and uh, somebody else leaned across the rail and said some things to her. I can't repeat you on the yeah. air. Uh, screamed at this this young reporter, um, and I'm thinking, that at some level, this is a kid. Mm -hmm. and yet, she's a young adult. Yes, she's a beginning reporter. Uh, she's trying to learn what's going on, and that's kind of what's going on now. Is, is she she was the target of an an attack, and uh, she said later on that she she did. Feel somewhat fearful about it. Yes, there, were, there was lots of security around. There was a she was in an area, and there was a, a, a fence-like uh, guardrail kind of along here, uh, and then the other lady on the other side. And she said she did feel feel fearful at some level. Yeah. So there's some some scare factor, and part of what we've had to do is introduce into our courses now. How do you be safe? As a reporter, mm -hmm. uh, where it used to be, you would go out on the street, you would cover, you would cover a riot, mm -hmm. uh, and you would feel safe about it. Well, now you are the target, yeah. uh, and so we've got to have kind of introduce that into the into the area. And it is interesting with the evolution of some of the medic or the, the the technology. We have more reporters sometimes going out on their own. Yes, because in the past you could say, well, you're out there with a photographer, and you can watch each other's backs, mm -hmm. and that still happens. But sometimes uh, you have crews of one. Yes, and what we've had to say 
to some other classes, if you have your cell phone camera, you may look like a reporter. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe you're just there ju yeah. just for fun to cover the event, and I think we've all kind of done that, but now somebody out there may think, you're a reporter, I don't like you, and may verbally or physically assault you, and so we've had to kind of introduce this in some other, other departments and classes as well. Be real careful. Uh, if you're out there taking what we used to call happy snaps, right. you're, you're just there taking pictures, you may be seen as one of those kind of reporters. You need to be real careful. Yeah. Well, like I said, the reporters, and there are some that maybe don't do things right, and they need to be held accountable, but I never thought we'd be in an age where we have the U.S. Senate unanimously passing a resolution, and good for them, affirming that the press is not the enemy of <laughs> the people. All right? Um, and it passed. I mean, of course, the president has repeatedly uh, declared fake news, fake news, enemy of the people. Which, I'm sorry, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, it, it, are there things that have been done and reported about President Trump that have been unfair at times? Absolutely. But the fact that he you know, doesn't like some investigations going on, I'm sorry. He, he wanted to call the Manafort case a witch hunt and, and fake news. Whether you support the president or not, and I'm talking to people like Cindy, one of our viewers, who's a staunch supporter, I hope she's lucid enough to see. Trump called that fake news. Manafort was found guilty on eight counts. That's not fake. Okay, Cohen, his attorney, mm -hmm. okay, that was wrong. Cohen pleaded guilty to counts. That's not fake news. These are people close to him that did this. So we see it. that's justification for the coverage of how this went. And the media had nothing to do with this. This was a judge and jury separate from us. But, I mean, you, you, you want to talk just about the importance of the media to democracy? Where the, the, the First Amendment is out there, historically, democracies cannot exist without a free press. In a democracy, the people participate. Unless the people know what's going on, they can't participate. Mm -hmm. And in a country as large as ours, uh, it's the media that provide those messages. And so if you want to know what's going on, few of us uh, are in the Capitol building. Few of us are in the White House seeing what's going on. So we re rely on those reporters to tell us what's going on. The democracy cannot function without a free press. Right. It's kind of like the watchdog is what they exactly. say. And again, to use an example of some of the recent investigations by Phil Williams. I mean, it's not all politics necessarily, and you know, looking at the president, even though he's the most powerful man in the world, so any president's gonna face scrutiny, but think about it, with Phil Williams, okay, well, Mayor Barry, mm -hmm. okay, think about it, the lead in the water in metro schools, things like this, if the government that doesn't want that known just shuts down the media, your kids are still drinking lead in your water, okay? You, you have things going on in government with your, your tax dollars being spent in ways they shouldn't be spent. That's why, that, those are just two small little examples of why it's right. important. And, and it may be simple sorts of things, the, the morning traffic report. Mm -hmm. yeah. That tra traffic report is telling us what are the roads like in Middle Tennessee. Yeah. That's not a news story really, but it's the media yeah. that are telling it's us hey, there, 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 there are issues out there and traffic being one of them. That may not be important to some people, it's important to a lot of other people, right. and we need to discuss the traffic situation. Yeah. And when we just saw a political campaign, do we want road to do we want light rail? That's a debatable issue, and but we've got to know what's going on. And, to and make an informed decision. Exactly. exactly. And, and another recent example that put it out there, and the, the DA here in town released before the investigation is done the video of the officer involved shooting okay of, uh, uh, that situation there and, and trying to be transparent we put it out there for people to see it and we're going to cover every step of the way but um, I guess that's what we want to kind of get into this morning and, and you as viewers and I assume if you're watching this show that you have an opinion or a thought about it um, and again it's it's separate from politics I think even though sometimes you're dragged into it but it's a shame that some reporters have to fear for their own safety when they're out there now trying to do a job and trying as they should to be fair and impartial. Um, the number is 737-7587. If you're on hold, stay there. We'll get to your calls. If you'd like to join us, we've got some lines open. We'll be back with more right after this. News Pendant.